On May 18, 2016, the Department of Labor's final rule updating overtime regulations was announced. This newest ruling came out of a process that started in 2014, with the notice of proposed rulemaking being published in the Federal Registry on July the 6th of 2015. To minimize anxiety or confusion over how these changes might impact our farm community, Penn State Extension has researched the topic and is providing this interpretation. It is recommended that individual employers work with their lawyer and accountant to be clear on how to manage these newest changes. The first question that comes to my mind is what are these new rules? The newest rulings on overtime compensation only affect salaried employees. Additionally, these are employees not fitting the official definition of a direct farm worker. There is no impact on family members employed on the farm. At certain times of the year, it isn't common for a farm's salaried employees to work in excess of 40 hours a week. This was not typically an issue in the past because the salary benchmark for overtime pay was $23,660. With these newest guidelines, they tell us that each salaried employee must be paid $47,476 a year. Of course, this is prorated for salaried employees with less than annual employment. If a salaried white collar worker does not make the benchmark, they are eligible for their hourly pay rate for hours over 40 per week. Additionally, they are eligible for time and a half overtime pay if they work in excess of 40 hours per week and, and are involved in a non-farm business. These newest provisions become effective on December 1st of this year. Once we understand the new guidelines, we might consider the potential impacts on our farm business. There are no changes that apply to our current hourly farm workers. The Department of Labor has a well-defined classification for employees titled Agricultural Worker Exemptions. In general, this means hourly employees directly involved in production on the employer's farm are not covered. As long as our employees meet these criteria, there are no changes because of this newest ruling. The salary benchmark of $47,476 does not include any credits given for housing or food. If employees are provided housing, beef, produce, vehicle, or such, the dollar value of these benefits does not count towards the dollar salary benchmark. If we operate a farm-related business, we should check with our professional advisory team to be certain we are in compliance. For example, a farm that also does custom harvesting off-farm should be certain they are following Department of Labor guidelines on employee compensation. To continue with exemptions to the newest guidelines, it is all about either meeting or not meeting the agricultural worker definition. If a farm does have employees affected by these newest Department of Labor guidelines, what should farm employers be doing? Again, we remind employers these are regulatory issues with real consequences for noncompliance. All farm employees should be certain to work with competent professional advice. We suggest that immediately all farm employers with an affected salaried white collar employee be recording the hours worked. Being fully aware of the hours worked by these potentially impacted employees will help us decide a course of action. All employers should also be certain they have each farm employee classified accurately. We sometimes find employers considering classifying employees one way to reduce the workers' compensation costs without fully understanding how this impacts the employee's eligibility for overtime compensation. Employers can change the relationship with employees. Examples to get us thinking along these lines might be raising an employee's salary to meet the benchmark, remembering this also impacts other employee costs. We could also reclassify the salaried employee to an hourly worker, subject to overtime or maybe with overtime limitations. As we try to work through our decision making on this new information, there are several sources that can help us along the way. The U.S. Department of Labor has a fact sheet on agricultural employees that fully describes these new guidelines and then also it describes the exemptions from the guidelines. The U.S. Department of Labor also has an extensive frequently asked question sheet that's available online and results from a webinar they did a couple of months ago describing these new rulings. And of course, our USDA has a chief economist with online resources and contact information as well. Farm employee guidelines can be complicated. Let's be sure we're doing our best to follow the regulations.